Lux Factory. Thank you for coming tonight. I am from the future. I am from the year 2116, 100 years in the future. And I've come back. I've come back to you tonight because I've been on a journey. I've come back to you here to see how capitalism was lived in 2016. You see, in my year, in 2116, neoliberalism is dead. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Professor Sullivan. I'm an economic historian at the Long Island City Free University. And you might be asking yourself right now, what is an economic historian? Good question. Well, you see, when neoliberalism died, it destroyed its own history. So we need people in the future like me to patch together that history, to make some sense out of it. So I'm here in part tonight to offer you hope. But I'm also here to sound the alarm. The future is not yet written. You see, in 2116, there is a rear guard, 0.001%, who wants to return to the old ways, who wants to embrace neoliberalism once again, who want to make America great again. I think you know a thing or two about this. That's why I've chosen your year. <laughs> I was planning on being optimistic tonight. I, really, I don't know how you do it. You people are dark. Dark, dark. But that rear guard, 0.001%, they need to be quelled. I need to know as much as I can about how you live capitalism. So I spent two weeks here. I visited your major financial institutions. That's why I'm dressed like this. I don't normally wear these clothes. It, it's amazing. You know, in 2016, a white guy in a suit, doors just open magically for you everywhere. It's incredible. Just try it sometimes. But I found many puzzling things about your capitalism, the way you live it, neoliberal style, about the things you believe, about your myths. But the thing is, I don't think you actually believe it. You just don't know what the future holds in. So tonight, I want to share that with you as well. But first, the myths. You see, capitalism is a system, but neoliberalism is that system brought to a religious status. And it says it on your money, in God we trust. There's simply promises to pay, the full faith and credit of the United States government. And indeed, in your cities, once the tallest structures were churches, now they're opaque financial towers, churches of finance. And like any good religion, neoliberalism is held together by myths, central myths. You believe in the self-made man. You believe in you. You believe in social mobility. You believe in a meritocracy. You can trust in you. You see, the greater good, it's always been too messy for neoliberals, right? It takes too much time. It's inefficient. And brought to the extreme, I found something just so puzzling in my last two weeks here. I, I've got to share it with you. Has anyone here heard of the carried interest tax loophole? Yes, one person. Okay, for, then share it with me here, right now, but for everybody. It's a 17th century law applied to ship captains who are carrying cargo across the seas. In the 17th century, they faced pirates and hurricanes, and so that was a great risk. So to mitigate that risk, they were charged a lower tax rate on the cargo they carried. Flash forward to now, in 2016, your hedge fund managers are claiming that same tax loophole. They're not facing pirates or hurricanes. In fact, they're not taking much risk at all. But yet, they're bankrupting your government, stealing from the greater good. Does that make any sense? So what it means is, your most sacred institutions, the, rep the, the repairs to your monuments are left in the hands of private capitalists, benevolent private capitalists. In the hands of benevolent capitalists are your centers of culture, your health, life itself. It comes from your theory of life, from Darwinism. Because to be a good neoliberal capitalist, I found out in my two weeks here, you have to be a social Darwinist. You have to give your economic theories a whiff of science and math just to make the whole thing work, to make it seem like a fact. You build the rational market. You build it out of the theory of competition that somehow Translated from nature, competition is always good. Survival of the fittest. Might equals right. Only the selfish survive. 
Your markets, your neoliberal markets are ecologies. You believe in the invisible hand, that guiding hand that mitigates all those little selfish actions. You want complexity. Just as in nature, variation produces survival, so too we need bankers to create synthetic CDOs, bespoke branch opportunities. And it must be unregulated, because we can't mess with what should happen. To regulate is to disturb the natural order of things. But I found out there's a problem with all of this. It's fake. A few blocks down the road here, your Federal Reserve is run by a junta of private bankers. It sets interest rates, and it treats the money supply like a giant tap. The markets are ecologies for you, but not for the few. For them, risk has been socialized, yet profit remains private. And let me give you an example, because I know we're all big on examples in 2016. In 2008, I found out you had a, a banking crisis, a credit crisis. Banks went out of business, practically. They went bankrupt. And what happened? A program called quantitative easing. And what that was, was basically the tap was turned on full to $14 trillion flooded the basements of your sacred financial institutions. Flooded them up to the ceilings and bought up and soaked all that bad speculation. You see, private property is protected, but not for you. Everything that you work for is vulnerable. So, in my time here, I've been searching for a biological metaphor, and I thought to myself, well, why not incest? Isn't that a better metaphor for this? An irregular feature of your market is the cycle. All of your economists talk about the cycle, boom and bust, bubbles. But what is a bubble? A bubble is just an opportunity, if you're a neoliberal capitalist. A bubble for all of us is pretty scary because it's when prices reset. So we don't know what's gonna happen next. We question our faith in the system. But if you're a neoliberal capitalist, you take the banks, you take the government, you take the police along for the ride, and you swing us around for another round of neoliberalism. Free markets, zero inflation. The thing is, we look at short cycles. We look at the seven-year business cycle. We look at the 50-day moving average. Maybe you've heard of these things. But what about the longer cycles? The longer cycles that we're suppressing. You see, if we look at 50-year cycles, perhaps neoliberalism has already died a thousand deaths, and it's on life support. Cycles are elusive. Bubbles are real. But in your neoliberalism, fortunes are made in nanoseconds. The final cruel myth is that the market is somehow social. The idea that I want to buy something and you want to sell something, and then somewhere in the middle we meet and we create a market, a concept called a market. But that's not true. 60% of all trades in your equity markets take place in nanoseconds by machines. High frequency trading. You see, in neoliberal capitalism, humans are the weakest link. Always the slowest actor. We show up for work hungover, we're prone to emotional decisions, we fight with people we care about, and it affects our work. Machines, not so much. In this new order, humans are here to serve information to the machines. And that's the key, information. But all of these myths, they've been internalized, right? It's your fault. In a meritocracy, if you're not successful, it's your fault. When that doesn't work, they pit us against each other. City versus rural, educated versus not educated. Just look at the news today. When that doesn't work, they resort to the last resort of scandals, brute force. And then there's the fear, the fear that governs it all. This is the vision of neoliberal capitalism, right? This is what neoliberal capitalists want us to believe would happen without financialized relationships. That somehow society would break down and we'd all resort to our basis instincts and then we'd all be tearing each other up in the street. But in fact, that, not, that actually might be a better metaphor for what it's like to live under neoliberalism, right? that maybe perhaps we'd be better versions of ourselves without it. All right, so I promised you optimism. I'm sorry, it hasn't been very optimistic, has it? But let me tell you about the future. All right, so I said information was key, right? So information very soon becomes the most valuable thing in the world. And when that happens, the state of information, its natural state is to be free. And when the most valuable thing in the world is free, that everything has to be called into question. Every price we have. Copyright is destroyed. 3D printing destroys fetish objects. Scarcity is exposed as a construct. And it's a start. The problem is that neoliberalism, it's simple and clear. Everyone understands it. We're used to it. 
The future is messy. But begin the long transition now. Hope is not optimistic, but pragmatic. Do we trust each other enough? Can we do it? It's up to you, my friends. For God's sake, don't make America great again. Thank you.